Where's Paul? Where's Paul? Where's Paul? <laughs> Clear the mind. Clear the mind. <laughs> Pack this piñata. Hello? <laughs> With the most surprising filling. You have five minutes to plan, 20 minutes to fill the piñata. Your time starts now. Where's Paul when you need him? Okay, my first thought was I'm going to take a shit into the piñata. That was the first <laughs> thing that came to my mind. And uh, unfortunately, I don't need to use the bathroom right now, so that's kind of out. The main issue is actually getting it in there. I don't see any kind of hole. Wait, how do you, how do you fill the piñata? Like, is there a... Is that part of the trick? This piñata filling should we watch first? We've got two fillings with a very similar theme. Here's Guy Williams and Madeline Sami. Welcome to a world of imagination, pleasure and surprise. Here before you is a piñata for you to bash. Some surprising things inside. Can't wait to see the look of surprise on your face, mate. <laughs> oh, OK. All right, you're literally flogging a dead horse. Really? Oh, my God. Oh, God, Paul, you're just supposed to bash the piñata, not the things inside of it. Whoa, surprise. So there's lollies. Yeah. What's that in your hand, though? Another piñata. Another piñata inside the piñata inside the piñata. What's that? Piñata. Another piñata inside the piñata. How good. Is that my album? Yeah, you just killed your album, bro. Did you illegally burn that? Maybe. I'm surprised, and I'm the one who did it. Like, how is that even possible? Is there anything else in here? They're little mini piñatas. You'd know that if you hadn't bashed them to smithereens. It was pregnant. Twins. So you're happy with how it went? Well, to be fair, you are like, going out of your way to hide your emotion. But I know you. Speaking to the camera now, I've known Paul his whole life. He doesn't show many emotions. And isn't that just typical of Kiwi males these days? They don't show what's on the inside, you know? They don't let their heart bleed. But I know when I saw Paul there, that was as surprised as he's ever been in his entire life. Oh, surprise. This is about men's mental health awareness. Get out there, get yourself checked. Kikaha. God defend New Zealand. Thank you, Guy. Thanks, Paul. I don't think anyone has ever done less for men's mental health awareness than you. Go out there and get yourself checked. Yeah. If anything, I've made the situation worse for a lot of men. Guy, you put lollies inside of your piñata. Yeah. It's not very surprising, really, lollies inside of a piñata. That's what, a piñata? It was piñata inception, guys. There was a piñata. Inside, there was a smaller piñata. Inside that, there was another piñata. Inside that, was another piñata. Inside that, was a lolly. Is it? Is that not blowing people's mind right now? I like it. Whoa! I feel like you're slightly over-exaggerating how many piñatas there were. Whoa! I'm amazed! Also, I did the piñata within the piñata as well, so it possibly wasn't as much of a surprise depending on who was... I, I did see Madeline's first. <laughs> Hello, Brinley. Hi, Paul. Hello, Madeline. Hello, Paul. There's a hand in there. Oh! How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, wooden hand. <clears throat> Do the most impressive thing hands-free. Most impressive thing done without using your hands wins. You have 30 minutes. Your time starts now. Hmm. <laughs> I might go look in the shed and just see if there's any inspiration in there. OK. Have we got a whiteboard? I think so. I don't need it. Um... <laughs> the obvious one to go for is feet, but I don't want to unleash my feet on the nation. <laughs> what are things that you always use your hands for is the main thing. Masturbating, I suppose that'd be a challenge <laughs> for the network more than me. <laughs> Not that. I would actually pay good money for a show that was uh, just Guy losing his teeth one by one uh, while trying to play golf with his mouth. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be keen. He's probably available. <laughs> hey, uh, there must be only one person's impressive hands-free thing to go. That's true. And it's Guy Williams.
Okay, my name is Guy Williams, and I'm going to flick this bucket off the ground and onto my head. And if I do it first time, it'll be genuinely impressive. Yeah, get the cameras ready. This will be a good one. You look very happy with yourself there. It's the best thing I've ever done my, in my life. Have you done that before or not? I've never done that before, no. But I was just so stoked and dreams can come true. Mm. You claimed anything is possible. And I agree, for example, it's possible that using editing, we can make it look like you did that in one attempt. But here's another look. My name is Guy Williams, and I'm going to flick this bucket <laughs> off the ground and onto my head. And if I do it first time, It'll be genuinely impressive. Yeah, get the cameras ready. This will be a good one. That was a warm up. That doesn't count. Oh, I may receive a light concussion for doing this. Oh! Fuck! Oh! Oh, that was it. That was it. I can't even do it with my hands. Go, go, go. The funny thing is, I didn't remember that that footage existed. <laughs> I thought I did it in one go. How many attempts in total? Uh, 31 attempts in total. <laughs> Still pretty good. Um, he also spent 13 minutes attempting to kick his jandal up and catch it in his mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Brinley. Hello. Hello, Angela. Hey, Paul, how are you? Good, thanks. I'm guessing I won't need that. Okay, you've brought that. <laughs> this is interesting. Throw this dart at the map and hit a country. Ooh, it's gonna be tough, there's a lot of water. You reckon I'm safe to stand here? You're, you're very safe, okay. I'm a professional. Yeah, my first thought was I'm just gonna throw it at you for a laugh. I won't do that, it's dangerous. Hit China. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going for. Aiming for the Netherlands. The Democratic Republic of the Congo. <laughs> I don't know anything about that country. China. It's China. Oh. Bangladesh. Oh. Libya. Oh no. Oh, double task. A two-parter. Figured this would happen. Write and perform a new national anthem for your country. The most rousing national anthem wins. You have one hour. Your time starts now. Let's get this, Democratic Republic of the Congo. This could be um, a political disaster. Racially sensitive, everything about this is wrong. But luckily I am musical, so... Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. So, they all had a full hour to research and write their anthem before performing. Here they are, making the most of that hour. What's your uh, knowledge of, of China like? Well, it's, it's OK. It's, it's, it's as good as the next guys, but it's whether they would have approached me to, to write a national anthem, I'm not so sure about that. Have you ever been to Bangladesh? No, but um, my dad is from India, which is next to it. Ah, oh, fish. They like fish. I remember I was sitting next to a Bangladeshi man on a bus and he told me about fish curry. What, what do you know about Bangladesh? I know they like fish, but only because you told me. 11 facts about the Democratic Republic of Congo. Congolese armed groups and elements of the army have a long, brutal history of recruiting child soldiers. <laughs> we'll skip that one. We'll skip that one. All right. <laughs> Just worry about offending people if I get the other thing wrong in this. Um, is that Mandarin? Pardon? Is that Mandarin you're, you've written? Well, it's not. I wouldn't call it full Mandarin, no. What else do you know about China? They always have a finalist in just about every thing in the Olympics. There's always like, holy shit, the Chinese are good at that too. 
Please don't damage the desk. I'll try not to damage the desk, but I can't promise you anything. We're going to write something about mayo. Apparently, they love to eat mayo with everything. Who doesn't? Yeah, who doesn't? Bangladesh. How do you actually say it? How do you pronounce Bangladesh? Bangladesh. I think he's the beat. We meet a guy from... Bangladesh. <laughs> I've never felt more anxiety about anything in my life. And I can vaguely remember what I did, and um, it's not good. Here he is, one of the top two Williams brothers. It's Guy Williams. My name is Guy Williams, and this is my national anthem for Libya. It's a song to unite the people with the spirit of the country of Libya. It's called Unite the People with the Spirit of the Country of Libya. Are you ready for some fun and a song about Libya? Paul Solo. <laughs> So long live Libya, unlike the people with the spirit. Time's up. It's not time up. It's time up. Can I at least finish the song? Like, I was just getting to the big conclusion of the song. What was the conclusion going to be? Was it going to be the same lyrics again? A little bit. Yeah, some of the same lyrics, but like with more intensity. Well, I guess it's your free time now, so you can sing it if you like. All right, a bit more music from you. I'm off the clock. Okay. Are you ready for some fun? Damage the desk. That's pretty rousing, no way. Oh, no, I need you to leave now. For some fun. I need you to leave now. And so leave now. You're standing on my agenda, I can't leave. Are you ready for a song and some love about Libya? Are you ready for a song and a song about Libya? Everybody, are you ready for a song and a song? About Libya. Woo! It was definitely the least musical of all of the anthems. It was fucking hardcore. <laughs> I smashed two guitars. I would have smashed three if they had three. It was quite a bit longer. We did cut it down a bit. The, the full version was five minutes and 37 seconds. <laughs> Oh, Which get on Spotify after this. It's on Spotify after this. It is 17 seconds shy of Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> So you come last. What? <laughs>